Hey, Mike with Nerd Problems Gaming here, the channel where we go through the good and bad of everything nerdy to make sure you spend your time on the best of the best. In today's video, we'll be talking about the top five most addicting games on Nintendo Switch so far, so let's get into it. So a couple things before I jump into the video. Obviously, I have not played every single game on Nintendo Switch, so I'm sure there's a ton of other addicting games available right now. But out of the many games that I've played, these are the five most addicting ones for me. But I also intend on making more of these videos of other great addicting games for Nintendo Switch. So if you don't see your game here, definitely drop it in the comments below because I may not have played it yet and I also might decide to feature it on a future Most Addicting Games video. So be sure to leave those addicting game picks in the comments below. But with that said, let's jump into the video. All right, so the first game on the list is Dead Cells. So in this game, you play as a reincarnating biomass that takes possession of a dead prisoner hidden deep within a prison inside of a kingdom. And in this game, you attempt to break out of this prison and take on the evil king and his henchmen. And so this is an act action platforming roguelike metroidvania game that's super addicting and a ton of fun. It's certainly become one of the most popular indie games out there and they continue to release more expansions and DLC for the game as well. But what makes this game so addicting is its roguelike nature, challenging boss fights, and ongoing items that you can find throughout the game. Certainly prepare to die as you play through this game. It can be extremely challenging. It's often compared to Dark Souls with its difficulty level, but since it is a roguelike like game that's part of the process where each time you do a run you'll get a little bit further you'll get more items and experience that you can eventually use to permanently power up your character which will allow you to get through runs more efficiently and progress a little bit further each time you do a run through when you first start out the game your runs might take a couple of minutes but eventually it could last 30 minutes or more as you can complete an entire run and take out all of the bosses now the game definitely stays fresh because each experience diving into the dungeon is totally different. You'll find different weapons and eventually you'll master different play styles using these weapons, which is a lot of fun and super addicting. It's one of my favorite games on the Nintendo Switch and it's definitely one of the most addicting games I've ever played and I highly recommend it. All right, the next game on the list is Fire Emblem Three Houses. Now this is a tactical RPG where you play as a mercenary turned professor. And so it's sort of like if they did a combination of Harry Potter and Game of Thrones where you become a professor in this monastery that trains soldiers from three different armies and kingdoms throughout the local area. And so right now these three kingdoms are at peace, but it always hasn't been that way. And so as you progress through the game, you'll unravel more of the story and try and prevent these three kingdoms going to war yet again. And so like other Fire Emblem games, it's a turn-based tactical RPG where you'll move various units across the board and each one of these units has their own unique abilities and weapons that they'll use and it also introduces a rock paper scissors type battle mechanic where certain weapon types are strong against others so again you might use a sword and it's very effective against axes or spears become very effective against swords and the same goes for different magic types and then there's flying units and ground units and flying units are weak against bow and arrows and the list kind of goes on and on so you'll learn the various strategies of your units as you play the game but it's also really Really cool is the fact that you're building these units from students within the various houses and so typically in Fire Emblem games you'll get a cast of characters that you can play as and they have their starting classes that again range from warriors to mages to knights to pegasus knights armored knights and it kind of goes on and on and eventually when these units get enough experience they can go through a class change and become more powerful and sometimes there's different options you can choose from and determine how these characters change classes to suit your play style and strategy now what's really cool with this game is the fact that all of your recruits and soldiers are students within this monastery and so them being students they're all kind of blank slates. They certainly start off with unique strengths and abilities and classes that they begin as, but as you play through the game, you can change virtually any character into any class, master any weapon type, learn any ability, and the list really just goes on and on. And so I found this to be really addicting and a lot of fun because it's almost endless possibilities as you play through the game. On top of that, you're also playing between the battle missions and then also teaching as the professor. And so this is a lot of fun too, where 
you'll explore the monastery, develop relationships with various characters, uncover secrets in the monastery, and level up your teaching skill as a professor as well. So not only can you level up your characters through battle, you can also train them in this school area, and that's just a whole nother thing to dive into, an addicting part of the gameplay as well. The storyline is a lot of fun, and depending on your actions within the game, you can align with one of the three kingdoms, which allows for multiple stories, multiple endings, and various different ways you can play through the game. You'll unlock a new game plus after you beat the game, which allows you to carry over a lot of your abilities and items and things you've uncovered from past runs in the game, but it gives you the chance to experience a totally different branch of the storyline that you might not have done in a previous run through of the game. Because of the multiple endings, the addicting gameplay, the level up mechanics, and the great story, this is one of my favorite games on the Nintendo Switch and definitely one of the most addicting, and I highly recommend it. All right, the next game on the list is Resident Evil Revelations 2. Now for me, this was kind of a hidden gem in the Resident Evil series. When I first heard about the Resident Evil Revelation games, I was a little turned off by them because they came out episodically. So you'd have a couple episodes here and there, and then you'd have to wait a few months till they released the next one. And it just didn't feel like a complete Resident Evil game like some of the other installments in the series. But these days, you can get the whole game in one package, and that's definitely the way to do it. And so I eventually checked out the series, and I was so glad I did. So the storyline centers around Claire Redfield and Barry Burton and Barry's daughter and a mysterious girl with psychic powers that Barry finds on the island. And so what's pretty cool with this is that between episodes, you'll jump back and forth between Claire and Barry's daughter and then Barry and this little girl. But basically what's happening is that Barry is exploring the island six months after the events that are happening with Claire and Barry's daughter. And so it's a cool mechanic, but on top of that, you can also play the entire game co-op and split screen on the same system. So in some Resident Evil games past, they have introduced that co-op nature to it, or kind of two playable characters going on at the same time. But this was definitely a really fun experience getting to play through the entire game with my girlfriend. Each character has their own unique abilities, and there is some RPG elements to the game as well, where in between missions, you can upgrade different aspects of the characters. But really where the most addicting aspect of the game comes into play is the raid mode. And so this was a mode that was in the first Resident Evil Revelations, but they took it to a whole new level in Resident Evil Revelations 2. And so in Resident Evil Revelations 2, there's well over 50 missions that you can go through, and each one is kind of a mini challenge where you'll face off against a number of enemies that you need to kill to complete each mission. And so some missions are just simply, you kill all the enemies and you're good to go. Others are kind of like a tower defense type mission where you need to guard a specific spot on the map and zombies and enemies will come at you continuously until you defeat the required number of them on the mission. But another really fun aspect to this is the fact that it combines even more RPG elements to it. So each character will level up as they kill zombies, but you'll also have equipment that has levels associated with it as well. But then you'll also find a bunch of different parts throughout the game that you can equip to your weapons and so this will do things like boost your ammo capacity, doing more damage, stealing life from enemies, helping you gain more experience faster, fire ammo, ice ammo, and on and on. There's so many parts that you can equip to guns, but what's really cool is that as you gather these parts together, eventually you can combine them, making more powerful parts. There's a shop in the game as well that you can buy new guns and equipment and power-ups, and then as characters level up, they'll gain skill points that they can use to level up different skills on the characters as well. So it might make them more efficient with handguns or shotguns or machine guns, or it might let them use a katana blade instead of a knife. You can use various different types of grenades that you can level up and make them more powerful, giving you more ammo to start. And the list kind of goes on and on of these different skills. On top of that, there's a bunch of different characters you can play as from the Resident Evil universe. So Claire Redfield, Chris Redfield, Leon Kennedy, Barry Burton, and many more characters as well. And again, each one of these characters characters can level up, they have different skills, some of them have unique skills as well, and once you've mastered that skill, you can pass it on to other characters that they can use and equip and level up as well. So with so many missions, so many characters you can level up, leveling up your guns, powering up the items, finding new parts, it's very addicting and it's really easy to end up sucking dozens of hours, if not hundreds, into this one aspect of the game. It's one of my favorite Resident Evil games because it is so addicting and has these great RPG elements and it's a ton of fun and I definitely recommend it. All right, so the next game on the list is another zombie game, Into the Dead 2. Now this is a little bit different kind of zombie game that I wasn't really sure I would be into, but it is 
is an endless runner zombie game. And so how it works is you'll be running through missions on somewhat of a rail, but you can move left and right to experience different parts of the level. And you'll do that while dodging zombies, killing zombies, finding more ammunition, and trying to make it to the end of the run while surviving. And so the general story of the game is you're playing as this guy who is separated from his family, his young daughter and his sister, after he goes out on a supply run, and their home base basically gets ambushed by zombies. And so now he's on foot trying to catch up to the caravan with his sister and daughter to meet up with them and survive the zombie apocalypse. And so what's really cool about this game is that many of the runs are very quick to complete. So often you'll complete a run in a minute or less, which really leaves you wanting more and taking on the next challenge. There's several different modes within the game as well. So there's the general story mode that you can go through. And I believe there's something like 60 missions within that. On top of that, each one of these missions has different goals and challenges associated with it. And as you beat these different challenges, you'll unlock more weapons and gold that you can use to upgrade your existing weapons, unlock new companions, which are sidekicks that follow you around. And there's a bunch of these to level up and use as well. So there's dogs that can help you from picking up more ammunition, getting more gold at the end of runs, killing zombies, and much more. But there's also things like bears, wolves, and even the terror dogs from Ghostbusters that can help you out as companions along the way as well. Now, in addition to the main storyline, once you've completed that, there's an elite mode that you can go through with additional challenges, but there's also an endless arcade mode, which features various different weapons and just a nonstop stream of zombies and running through them and trying to get the high score. But there's also additional story missions from Night of the Living Dead, one of the most famous zombie movies, and even a campaign featuring the Ghostbusters, which is a ton of fun. Playing this game and going through these quick runs and missions often goes from a couple minute run into a several hour playthrough because it's hard not to just want to do one more and play again and again throughout this game. It's one of my favorite zombie games, definitely one of the most addicting games on Nintendo Switch, and I highly recommend it. All right, the next game on the list is another super popular indie game, Hades. And so this game won a ton of awards for game of the year, and I think many of them were justified. And so in this game, you play as the son of Hades that is trying to escape from the underworld, and it is a roguelike action game from the top-down view perspective. So as the son of Hades, you have all kinds of abilities that you can use and weapons you can choose from for each run, which give you a different experience. So there's like swords, a bow and arrow, claw gauntlets, and much more. And each one of them has a unique play style and abilities associated with them. On top of that, as you progress further, you'll encounter different gods from Mount Olympus that will help you along your way. And so each one of these gods has a unique personality and they have unique interactions with your character as well. And so this is a big fun aspect of the game because a lot of these characters will make references to past runs that you've done. So maybe it's how you died, other characters you encountered. And as you play, you can develop relationships with these gods as well. And so sometimes they'll make references to the strength of your relationship with other gods. And that's just a whole nother cool element of the story as well. As you run through these various dungeons, you'll also face off against challenging bosses like the Hydra, Megara, and even a gladiator and Minotaur, and several more. Another super addicting aspect of this game is the fact that once you beat the game, you unlock more challenging modes where you can add additional difficulty settings to your run-throughs. And as you do this, you'll unlock more items that you can use to further power up your weapons and character while always upping the difficulty and challenge every time you go through a run. Since there's so many things that you can level up from expanding the lobby area, upgrading your room, upgrading your character, improving the weapons, building relationships with other gods, and the list kind of goes on and on. It becomes very addicting wanting to unlock all these different things, wanting to progress and get a little bit better every time you go through. And again, since it is that roguelike game, each time you go through the dungeon, it's a fresh experience. And another cool element too, is that often within these floors of the dungeon, once you clear that, you can choose between differing branching paths, which might be an upgrade to your weapon, an upgrade to your health, chatting with different gods at Mount Olympus, which they will then bestow new abilities and power-ups to your character based on the god that you talk to. So if you have a specific play style you like, you can choose that route, or if you want to experience more and a different challenge, you can talk to different gods, acquire different items, choose these different paths, and it's a ton of fun. The storyline is great, the gameplay is addicting, and it's definitely one of the best games on Nintendo Switch, and certainly one of the most addicting, and I highly recommend it. So again, guys, that wraps up my list of the top five 
five most addicting games on Nintendo Switch so far. If you like this video, be sure to smash that like button as it really helps out the channel. If there's games that I missed on this list or that you think are more addicting or just as fun, definitely leave them in the comments below. I'm excited to make more videos like this and add more great games to my backlog. But if you guys haven't done so yet, be sure to subscribe and turn on the bell notifications to get the latest updates of new nerd videos we put out. And if you'd like to help support the channel, pick out content and more, become a patron of ours at nerdproblemsgaming.com forward slash Patreon. And if you'd like to plug into our live streams and Let's Plays with you on the channel, you can follow us over on Twitch at nerdproblemsgaming.com forward slash Twitch. But once again, thanks for tuning in and we'll talk to you more soon.